Hi, Chair. How are you doing today? Good, good. So, folks, today we're going to look at some word problems involving right triangles and take a look at how to solve them. Now, you can download this, this uh, document right here from my website, and you can follow along, or you can read it on the screen. It's up to you. So let's take a look at the first one. <clears throat> I have a mathematical cat. His name's Icicle, by the way. I'll tell you about him sometime. And all my cats, my cats are very mathematical. And my cat, in this case, he's standing over here. He's looking at this lamp. He's probably going to start some trouble knocking it over. But he's, he's got a pretty sharp eye. He can tell that from where he's standing to the base of the lamp is 18 feet. And he can tell that that angle right there is 8 degrees. And he wants to figure out how tall that lamp is. All right. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to use sine and cosine and tangent to try and solve this. Now, taking a look at what we know right now, Tierra, I notice we know 8 degrees. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, looking at our sides, we know this side is 18 feet. Is that, so if we think about that in terms of x and y and r, would this be x, would this be y, or would this be r? That's x. That's x. And we want to know the height of the lamp. What would that be? Y. Y. So now thinking about your trig functions, which of our basic three uses both x and y? Tangent. Tangent. Okay. So let's go over here and see if you can't write a tangent formula for me using the information in this problem. And I'll step back here out of your way and let you shine. Using that information? Yes. You have tangent of 8 degrees equals y over x. So Could you fill that in more? Yes. Ten of 8 would equal y, since we don't know it, and x is 18. Absolutely. That's pretty good to start off. Now, what are you trying to solve for in that? Where's your unknown in that statement? Our unknown is in y. Okay, so what are you going to do to that equation to get y by itself? Multiply each side by 18. All right, go for it. And I've got a calculator set up for you over there. Now let's think about that for just a minute. Two and a half feet. Is that a reasonable number for the height of a lamp? Two and a half feet, that would be about like yay. Could we imagine a lamp like this? So do we have a number that makes sense in the real world? Yes. All right. So there's our first problem. Now let's try our hand at the second one. So here's one that's got a little bit more going on. Let's take a read together. A drone flies over a North Houston neighborhood before its battery runs down and it has to land. The drone lands 480 feet east and 635 feet north of where it started. Now folks, you know my first three rules for a word problem. Draw a picture, draw a picture, draw a picture. So let's get a picture going up here. What could you show to describe this story? Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Oh, so it says that the drone lands 480 feet east. So this would be 480 feet. And then 635 feet north. So 635 feet north. And then this is starts which is the phone here cool now I have a question for you yes this path was due east 
and this pass was due north, so what angle must you have right there? 90 degree angle. Ah, okay, and now that you know that, let's try the first part. How far is the drone from its starting location? So what part of that picture shows us how far the drone is from where it started? This. Yeah, the radius, absolutely, the radius. Okay, and our dear friend Pythagoras can help us out now. And notice, folks, she doesn't want to do arithmetic like that in her head. That's a good time to grab a calculator. Oh, that's a big number. It's a big number. I squared six three three six two five. So square root both sides. Would you go ahead and add that to the picture as well, just to make it clear for folks? Cool. All right, so there's part A, folks. The drone has landed 796 feet away from, away from where it started. Now the next question, could we figure out the drone's bearing? Bearing means the angle that tells us the direction the drone went. Okay. So where would the bearing be in that picture? This picture is bearing. Yes, yes, indeed. All right. So let's take a look at what we've got. We were given x and y, and we're trying to find the angle. Which trig function are we going to want? Tangent. We got another tangent, folks. All right. So go for it. Is it okay if I? Oh, I think you can erase that. Okay, step back just for a second so people can see your writing. All right, good. Now, since we need to find theta, you have to do the inverse of tan theta. Yep. This would be tan to the negative one. You take tan to the negative one on both sides. And the proper term for what she's saying, tangent to the negative one, is called arctangent. That's what we'll be calling it in class, arctangent. Now what happens on the left? These cancel and theta equals tan to the negative one arc tan of 480 to y, y over x. Oh, oops, oops. See, we all make mistakes, folks. My bad. All right. Okay. That's all right. I stood here and watched you do it, and I didn't catch it either. So. Notice, folks, that it should be y over x for tangent. y over x for tangent. Nice. But that's all right. That's why pencils have erasers. Huh? Over 52.9. Is that radians or is that degrees? Degrees. Degrees. Okay. So, folks, we now know that this drone flew a distance of 796 feet, and the angle, the direction that it traveled, was 52.9 degrees north 
of east along that path. All right, we're chugging right along. Well, let's try a tough one now. Okay. Don't want people to get bored at home. So here comes a little bit more challenging one. So I'll read this one to everybody while you're getting the board ready. Joey is flying a kite and he wants to determine its height. So we're going for the height of the kite. He, he enlists the help of his friend Giovanni. Janavi is standing 90 meters away from Joey. Joey whips out a compass and figures out that the angle of the kite is 62 degrees above the ground from where Giovanni is standing. I'm sorry, from where Joey is standing. And Giovanni, from where he is standing, is 37 degrees up to see the kite. And what we want to do is we want to see the kite. Figure out how high is this distance right here. Well, what's the big trick to a problem like this that we've seen when we worked on these together a couple years ago? Well, it's two triangles instead of one triangle. Ah, could you draw for us those two triangles, please? So folks, you're going to see there's one big triangle right here. She's drawing it over there. And then there's one small triangle over here. And we're going to look at both of them. So I'm just going to label this one to match what you've done. Notice, folks, she's labeled this side, how high up the kite is, H. And she's labeled this little piece right here. From Joey over to directly underneath the kite, she labeled that X. So that means on the bigger triangle, from John Avi to the, right underneath the kite, that's 90 add X. From Joey to just underneath the kite is just X. And in both cases, the triangle has a height of H. All right, now folks, what we're going to do is we're going to write a formula for each of those triangles now. All right. And again, folks, you'll notice we know the up and down side y, and we know the base x, so we're talking tangent again. Okay. So for the first triangle, we have tan of 37 degrees equals h over 90, 90 plus x. Cool. Now, if you would, just to give everybody plenty of room, let's go ahead and put the formula for the other triangle over here again. Okay. So for the other formula, we have tan 62 equals H over X. Good. Now, the trick to this problem is we got to figure out a way to get these two equations together. And there are a couple of things we share. They both say tangent, but that's not quite shared because that equation over there is tangent of 37 degrees. This equation over here is tangent of 62 degrees. But they both have an H sitting up top by its lonesome in the numerator. And that's not too hard to get it by itself. So in order to get the H by itself on both equations, you will multiply out the denominator on both sides. So for this equation, we multiply by 90x, you will cancel, and then 90 plus x. And then for this equation, we multiply by x on both sides. Cool. So now notice we have 90 plus x multiplied by tangent of 37 equals h, and we also have x multiplied by tangent of 62 equals h. So since both of those formulas are equal to h, we can say they're equal to each other because they're both equal to the same thing. Yes. So this formula on the left equals h. This formula on the right equals h. Since they're both equal to the same thing, they got to be equal to each other. So now we can say that 90 plus x equivalent to x tan 62. Cool. Now, if you go to your calculator, tangent of 37 is a number. So we're going to go to the calculator, find that number. And similarly, tangent of 62 is a number. So we're going to go to the calculator, we're going to find that number. 
So we now have x plus 90 times, and what is the tangent of 37 tt? 0.754. Okay, so we have 90 plus x. x. Multiplied by 0.754. Do write at least three digits here, folks. If you write fewer than three digits, then your answer is going to run into some round off error. And then we have x times tangent of 62, or x times... 1.881. 1.881. So we have 1.881x there. 1. Cool. All right. So now we're getting into a bit of Algebra 1. The numbers are messy, but everything we're going to do from here on out is actually just plain old Algebra 1. We're going to distribute the 0.754 over here. So that 0.754 goes to the 90, and it goes to the x, and then we're also going to multiply the 1.881 together with the x right there. And so what do you get, ma'am? So when you distribute the 0.754, you get 67.86 plus 0.754x equals 1.881x. Awesome. Now, if you were back in Algebra 1 and you had to solve that equation for x, what would you do next? Subtract 0.754 from both sides to get x on the same side. Cool. So close, what's left to get x? Divide by 1.127 on both sides. Okay, and I don't think you need to write out that step. We can just go straight to the answer. Okay. So folks, she's now dividing both sides by 1.127. Then write on x to equal 60.213. Okay, so folks, here's what she has found. We now know this piece right here, from Joey's feet to directly underneath the kite, is a distance of 60.213 meters. So now we know the entire base of both triangles. If we take that number by itself, that's the base of Joey's triangle, which was this smaller triangle here on the right, or if we add that number to 90, then we get the total length of the base for uh, Janabi. So now we're not done though, because what do we still really want to find in this problem? The height of the we kite. We want to find the height of the kite. Now I noticed that earlier on we did two formulas working out the height. Earlier on you told me that the height was 90 plus x times tangent of 37, and of course we know what x is now, mm -hmm. or that the height was x times the tangent of 62. Now, if you were picking between those two, which one would you want to plug into? The one with just x. Ah, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and erase the rest of this to give you some room to work. But we've already videoed that, and I've already put that information into the picture. And now you're going to try plugging x in. Uh, 60.213 meters. And 62H. Absolutely. So, 60.2. So, from this, the height would equal 113.244 meters. And if we do a little significant figures here, I notice that we really only rounded to the nearest whole number. So if we round that, I could say that that is roughly 113 meters up, yes? Yes, sir. Now, at heart, it should not matter which of these two equations for h we used. We might get a slightly different answer if we were to plug in 
because we did round these numbers off. So we might get a slightly different answer. And just to show you folks that that works, we're now gonna go ahead and try the other one as well. So now just to confirm our answer, we're gonna go ahead and replace X with 60.213 in the other formula and see if we don't get the same height. So she's plugged in 60.213. Now we're taking it to the calculator. 90 plus 60.213 in parentheses multiplied by tangent of 37. Okay. And what did you get? 113. 113. Was the decimal different? A bit. It was 113.194. Ah, so over here we got 113.2. Over there you got 113.19, but 19 rounds up to 2. So we have almost exactly the same answer both ways, and so now we can definitely say that the kite is right at 113 meters above the ground, whether we look from John Avi's point of view or we look from Joey's point of view, we're getting basically the same height. So what this video was meant to focus on was how do you use the side to right triangle to measure things that you can't otherwise get to. For instance, when we talked about my cat, well, I'm not going to let my cat go mess with the lamp to figure out how tall it is, but he's curious. He wants to know how tall it is. When we talked about the probe, we want to know how far did that drone fly, but maybe that drone flew over some buildings. Maybe that drone flew over a pond, but we can still figure out how far it went by knowing how far east and west. And now, well, we don't have any way to climb up a ladder to get to that kite, but just from some measurements on the ground, we can figure out how high the kite is. And now, folks, it's your turn.